My name is Carly Snyder and I am an environmental um, communicator at Community Groundworks. And we are shooting a video today about um, winter tree identification. So I'm here with Brian and he'll introduce himself. Uh, my name is Brian Pruka and I spent a lot of time over the years uh, learning about trees in southern Wisconsin. Uh, here in Madison and today we're just going to walk around a neighborhood and learn some easy ways to identify trees without their leaves and kind of get a sense of just how much diversity there is even within the city. So we're going to start with, we've decided, see that tree over there? I'm going to say it looks like it's got a bunch of string beans on it. You don't want to see it there. Uh, of a tree that's uh, Catalpa, or um, often it's called, if you're from the south, they call it northern Catalpa because they have a southern Catalpa as well. But it's a, a fairly uh, common city tree. A tree that is not native to our area, but it doesn't spread. So it's a really good tree. Uh, you don't have to worry about it becoming a problem uh, taking over an area. The obvious uh, thing here is, is the string beans, the fruits hanging on the tree, so it's a really easy one. All, they all get the string beans. So if you want a tree that flowers later than the spring flush of most things like lilacs and, and uh, crab apples and stuff, this is a really good tree because it, it's like a completely white wall of flowers in early to mid June. Uh, so, it's, it's quite a stunning sight when it's in bloom. He snuck up on this tree and it didn't run. And this is that catalpa again. I don't know anything you noticed, Carly. One thing I thought about uh, as we walked over here that I didn't mention before is you'll remember, and maybe we'll get another shot of this, but this tree is growing quite vertically. There's not much branching out like an oak. Uh, to this horizontally, and it's got a lot of space to do that. It's all open around it. I don't see any big uh, stumps or anything to suggest that there was light competition. But uh, the talpas are trees that naturally grow quite vertically, and so that's kind of another hint, uh, kind of goes with the form of all the vertically hanging beans. So it's, it's got this kind of a neat feeling of being a uh, Kind of a tall tree. Find another tree somewhere. Next tree. This tree is pretty much in full bloom. This is a silver maple. So um, the bark, I feel like there's like kind of like a twisting texture. Is yep. that? Actually, a lot of trees have that. It's, okay. Um, they, uh, it actually helps make the tree stronger. Okay. It's, oh, not, it's less likely to break if it's got kind of a twist in them. So you'll see that a lot of trees have that a lot of species. Um, this is a really big example of a silver maple. They get really big. One of the, I'm trying to, well, let's focus on identification first. We'll talk a little bit about why you might or might not want them in a certain part of your yard. But um, the bark is really, I don't know how you describe it, how you describe it. It's very strippy. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very kind of strippy and flaky. Yeah. And I almost have to step back. I don't know if anybody can see this, but maybe we'll have to see a few examples. But it's often kind of a pinkish color in some of the under bark. Here it looks more orangey on this tree. Um, I feel like right in here oh, almost. Yeah. And if you're standing probably where you're filming back there, it's actually more obvious than it is to us standing right next to it. Um, but sometimes at, at a distance you'll see it and you just kind of can sense that there's a pink or an orange pinkness uh, undertone. This tree does grow really fast and it's one of these ones that uh, breaks easily once it gets pretty big. So that's kind of a downside if it's right next to your house. But if you want a tree that grows fast, it produces great shade and it's so beautiful in the spring, it's a it's a really beautiful tree. Generally they plant themselves. Alright, I guess we'll, we're gonna go somewhere else. We're kinda headed towards the zoo. And, uh... Let's head to the next one. Okay. So this is a Siberian elm tree? Yes. 
Carly picks out kind of a tough one for you guys. <laughs> but it, it looks, it is very unique looking, so we're going to do it. Elms are kind of tough in the winter. Um, but you were noticing, I mean, what caught your eye about this tree? I noticed the branches just are really fine and thin, and it almost looks like, I thought of like veins, like they're very thin and there's so many of them coming up from the main branch. Yeah, and that really is a, uh, a main clue if you're up close to a Siberian elm. Is if you look at these branches, I mean, they're, they're so thin. And you can see these knobs on them right now. And uh, those are the flower buds, and they'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. But compared to all the other elms, uh, those branches are so thin. And they look, right now, they're at their peak kind of noticeableness, or during the winter. Um, and we're kind of just heading into spring here. Obviously, we had that one tree flowering before, if you saw that. And, uh, up close, that's probably your best clue. Um, if you knew all the different kinds of elm bark, I would tell you that this one is more knobby than American elm or slippery elm. Uh, it doesn't seem to have as much complete strips as the other two. This tree is one of these trees that's almost easier to recognize from a distance than it is up close. Oh, that makes me. Picked out another tree and let's tell you it's a black walnut. I'm trying to think the first thing I would do the bark. I'm actually going to start got a chance here to look up into the tree. Um, you'll notice this is very different from uh, some of these other trees, the Siberian elm we saw with lots of little branches. But this tree there's practically no little branches and in fact it's almost all fairly large branching. Very very open. The way I like to describe this tree is branching looks like deer antlers. Oh, um, yeah, I see it. You, know, you, know, you can almost imagine that being like a small crack on a, on a deer. And that, that's a really good cue that you're looking at uh, a walnut. Because they're very open and the, yet the branching is not really straight. It's, it's got a lot of this curving to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, for me it's the the deer antler tree. This is one of these trees that's um, has what they call compound leaves. So this is one leaf and there was like leaflets coming off oh, here. Okay. So it has like nine or eleven leaflets, something like that. This is the end of the kind of the, you know, the bud of mm -hmm. the bud that broke in the spring created this little branchlet. And then there were these little leaflets that came off it, but this was all one leaf because it grew from one bud. Interesting. And so on trees that are compound like this, they essentially, you know, this is almost like a little branch, but every year they drop that. So the little fine branches like we were seeing on some of these other trees don't exist because this tree doesn't use little branches. It actually uses little, what they call rachises on, on, leaf, on compound leaves. So, a general thing to keep in mind is that the tree has a really open branching architecture like this, where there's a lot of space. In the winter, it probably has compound leaves. It tends to be a darker bark, at least from a distance, although it looks pretty gray and light up close. And this sounds really weird because we talked about the under color of that silver maple that was pink. Some people, and I can see it now that I've seen enough of them, there's almost like a purple under color in this bark on certain trees. It would have to be the right tree, and sometimes, like, I think oh, that's a little bit. Might be easier to see sometimes when it's not quite as bright, but, um, you know, it's a fairly thick bark, and it's pretty linear, there's not a lot of crossing of the, of the strips. Yeah, this is a basswood, or an American linden, American basswood, American linden. And definitely one of the things that's really noticeable about this tree uh, is it does have these strips, but they're much narrower and they, I mean they're not very deep, like you said, it's very shallow. I sometimes describe it like busting on a cake with some cracks in it. Uh, whatever works for you in ways of thinking about it, that's one of the ways I've come to think about it, but definitely that shallowness partly that you talked about 
It's really distinctive. There's other trees with shallow bark, but it really stands out on this tree. Uh, and then often there, it's kind of there's just kind of a little bit of waviness, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main things. You mentioned how it's kind of growing up. This is another one of these trees that tends to be tall even in the open and doesn't get really wide. So you got that right on. Um, Learning. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know it's a good trait to look for. Uh, so the bar that part of the bark is one main key. The other thing is the branching on this tree again. Branching is, there's a couple of things with this tree that are really interesting about branching. I always describe this as the lipstick bud tree. Oh, yeah. Because it's kind of a, it's almost the color of a certain kind of lipstick, maybe <laughs> a 50s carbon type lipstick. Totally. <laughs> and uh, it's a pretty distinct color. And occasionally these trees will have green buds rather than red, but 95% of them have these big red buds on the end. So, um, so this is a lipstick tree, that's what I, one of the things I like to call it in the winter. And uh, those are the three main traits that make this tree uh, easy to identify in the winter. We are at Bear Mound Park now, and I love this place because of the huge oak trees. Um, so maybe we can talk a little bit about different varieties. You see a tree like that that's extremely coarse. Uh, it has pretty coarse branching. It's not a compound leaf tree, but it does have quite coarse branching, and it, especially if it's spreading out like this, and then it has this really thick bark we're going to look at, the saburro and it's probably uh, in, the, in the wilds around Dane County, it's the most common tree. And there's still tons of them around Madison, but most of them are these old ones that are, you know, these trees are at least 100 years old. Mm -hmm.